getting APIs to work is one thing, but scaling the practice is quite a bit more challenging and something that a lot of people are interested in now. And to talk a little bit about that, we have Iken and Rival with us. Hey, Iken, how are you doing? I'm very well, Eric. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. And thanks for being back. You're on the show for the third time now, which is great. You're a third timer now. You recently published a book that is called Automating API Delivery. And it's about what we call this video end-to-end -end automation of API product delivery, which is a bit of a mouthful. But tell us a little bit about why you wrote this book and you've now started your own consultancy. So you clearly see some demand in that space. So why do you... Why did you do that? What do you see in the market that made you think that this is something that people need? Thank you very much, Eric. Really, the idea from the book came out from, you know, working with organizations who are embarking on API programs and seeing the challenges they face with, with kind of, you know, API sprawl. They had a lot of APIs. They were learning to build APIs, but they also needed to publish these APIs externally for their consumers to, to consume. And what they really faced was a challenge between, on the one hand, you know, um, putting in effective API governance uh, around their APIs, but on the other hand, trying to deliver those API at speed. And, and they, they kind of went one of two ways. Either they, they put in really heavyweight governance processes that slow down everything and really frustrated developers, or they, you do, they give developers a free hand, you know, teams could have their own standards and, and do what they like. But at the end, the organization ended up with inconsistent APIs, APIs that were difficult to use, sometimes insecure or poorly documented. And so the question was, how can you get the best of both worlds? How can you get your high quality APIs, but also get really fast uh, delivery, really uh, low lead times in terms of getting things out the door? And the answer to that is API ops. Um, that's what I took from your book. So you call it API Ops. Let's briefly go through the, the principles. So you have a set of principles that you work with where you say this is really what you should look at in terms of better scaling your API practice so that you actually get good results and you also get them at a good velocity. Absolutely. In the book, I outline six kind of principles around API ops. One of them is starting with the idea of API design first, you know, and enhancing collaboration and parallel development. The other ones around things like running API conformance to making sure your APIs and the documentations in sync. Uh, things like um, automating API consistency checks, linting, breaking chain checks, and really putting in a CI CD pipeline or building in automated controls into your CI CD pipeline to make sure that you get really quick feedback, really uh, rapid feedback and collaboration, but really automated controls to make sure that you reduce risk uh, uh, throughout the uh, API development process. Mm -hmm. And in order to follow those principles, you have, you have a, a set of practices, I would say, that you recommend where you tell people this is probably what you should be doing. Can you give us just a brief overview of the practices that you're covering, that you're recommending, that you've used in your own practice? Absolutely. And the key thing here is really to study uh, the particular organization's API workflow. Every organization has a different workflow. And so it really starts with studying the workflow, understand where the current bottlenecks are, the current issues are, uh, and understanding where the current risks are, whether there are API design security risks, whether there are other risks around uh, tracking who did what when. And um, uh, so studying that workflow then enables us to gradually introduce automations that you know target the 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 key problem area so whether that's on the api design stage uh, using the right tooling simple simple things like storing api definitions in version control uh, you know putting in breaking chain checks like i talked about api linting um uh, things like that uh, and then things like generating sdks and and server stops along along the along the line in your ci cd pipeline uh, running the api conformance checks i talked about to make sure that the documentation does match the behavior of the API and there is no API drift and using a GitOps uh, pro or process or workflow to make sure that we deploy API configuration uh, uh, in a way that is, is audited in a way where we can track changes uh, and in a way that is void of having to push tickets, um, but rather using a pull request based and developer friendly way to deploy uh, API configuration. And you, you mentioned GitOps and you've, you brought a, a small example to just demonstrate a little bit what that can look like. So I think your practices are 
like a set of things to choose from, if I see that right. And in your example, you, you're just looking at one specific things and how that may happen and how API ops would make that more effective. Uh Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things I want to point out in the example I, I, I you know, I illustrate here is that um, it uh, API Ops is about a tight collaboration between the, the developer team and those people who are in the uh, API uh, platform team or API operations, because you, we want to empower developers to, um, you know, design APIs, uh, build APIs, and implement API, you know, uh, implement API configuration, write it down, but also collaborate with the, uh, if there's a centralized uh, ops team, is a centralized um, API platform team to then, who can then approve, you know, pull requests. And having this light governance processes in place, light, uh, pull light change approval process in place really helps speed up the velocity of the teams and help them deploy um, deploy software, uh, you know, uh, quickly, rapidly, and, um, and and roll that out to to put to to the different environments, um, and you know, get get really reduce the lead time for for changes for so, yeah software changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that sounds all really interesting, and I I really find it interesting to see you know your book came out, then we see a big success of a platform engineering, right? The whole idea of platform teams is a very popular aspect in platform um, engineering. We also see the big success of, of team topologies, right? The same kind of thing, a lot of like team-based ideas and how to make teams collaborate um, in a more effective way. And I think it's it's really like an exciting time, so to speak, in that space and see how things actually are made to scale better. So so you're independent now and you are, you're consulting with companies on these issues when they ask you about assessing their current state or what's what's your main focus in, in what you're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. I'm working with companies to do to, to do that, uh, access their current state and help them improve. But if I might just go back a little to the point you raised about platform engineering, uh, engineering, Eric, I think that's a that's a that's a really excellent point. That's a great point, because the whole point of all this is really, again, reducing the cognitive load on developers, helping them to build and release things quicker. And so, and so uh, when we talk about API platforms, they're really talking about, it's not just the technology and, and, you know, all these practices I talk about here in terms of automation practices are great. But in the book, I also talk about the wider view of thinking about the people and the processes that the teams have to have in place. And in my view, these are what make a platform. Is this a technology, but also the orchestration of that technology with the governance process, with the governance practices and processes that are in place to help teams, uh, provide teams with all they need whether it's, uh, whether it's internal teams here, whether it's the internal documentation they need, uh, internal API, self-service tools, um, you know, a, a golden path templates, whatever you need to help these internal teams develop APIs, again, high quality API at speed. So this idea of API ops really ties into strongly with, with API, uh, API platforms, the idea of API platforms and, and platform engineering. And so, um, so that's that. So yes, uh, yes, I do help teams. I do help uh, uh, companies with 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 this. Uh, and again, uh, a big fan of continuous improvement, which is looking to gradually introduce changes, uh, seeing where the companies are, and gradually introduce changes at the points that provide the most value to where the company is at at that point. Uh, removing those specific bottlenecks that are holding them uh, holding them back. Okay, yeah, that, that does sound like an area where there is a lot of expertise and help still required. And um, yeah, it's, it's good to see that that you'll be doing that. So thanks a lot, uh, Ikana, for being here. We'll link to the resources from the description, to the book, to your, to your page, uh, so that people can check things out if they're interested. And um, yeah, thanks for being here. Any, any last words from you, Ikana? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Eric. It's, it's you know it's great to be on your show. Indeed, this is a really exciting area. This area of really you know improving uh, workflows, improving the operational efficiency for for organizations as they um, as as they build software quicker and you know more software quicker. So um, really exciting area and um, uh, happy, uh, really really happy to be in this space. And thank you very much. Sure. And thanks everybody for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And until next time, keep getting APIs to work or keep getting API ops to work. I guess now we have this additional thing there. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.